Welcome everyone to this uh, new module in the Generative Models course. In this module, we are going to study denoising diffusion probabilistic models, abbreviated as uh, DDPMs or in short called as diffusion models. Now these diffusion models form the state of the art models for uh, tasks like conditional image generation in the uh, current uh, scenario. Now you might have seen a lot of uh, examples where uh, commercial language models uh, such as uh, GPT now can generate images conditioned on a particular text. Okay. So these conditional image generation models are mostly based on the principles of uh, diffusion models. So while we studied uh, two families of diffusion models before, which are the adversarial networks and uh, variational autoencoders, the current state of the art is using uh, diffusion models. Uh, so we will study uh, DDPMs or diffusion models in the coming module. Now there are multiple possible interpretations of uh, how one can look at uh, diffusion models. Uh, one can look into that from stochastic calculus seeing that as uh, the solution for a stochastic differential equation or one can see that from uh, an energy based model modeling framework. The other way to look at it is as uh, a special case of uh, variational autoencoder or as a latent variable model. So that is why uh, we studied uh, the VAEs or uh, uh, variational autoencoders before uh, jumping on to this particular topic. Now the approach that I would take uh, in this course. Uh, majorly will be to show diffusion models as uh, continuation or rather a special case of uh, uh, VAEs or latent variable models. Okay. So now let us start uh, as usual the problem is that we are given we are given data. So let us call it uh, D equal to x0, x1, x2 up to xn. This is sampled IID from an unknown distribution Px. So this is the usual problem setting that we have. Okay. Uh, now the goal is as usual to learn to sample we need to know how to sample from the unknown distribution px. So this is the generative modeling problem, right? This is the generative AI as they call it. This is the generative model modeling problem. Now DDPM <coughs> tackles this problem from a latent variable model perspective, uh, the usual latent variable models that we saw. So if you recall uh, in a VAE, so I would like to see DDPMs, DDPMs are are latent variable latent variable generative models generative models uh, that can be seen as special cases of these family of uh, models called hierarchical VAEs. Hierarchical VAEs. So now what are these uh, hierarchical VAEs? So recall that in a VAE, in a VAE, so broadly what is the idea? The idea is that we start from the data space X right, and project the data onto a latent space that we denoted by the variable z and then you get back to the data space. So now this was the encoding process where uh, there was a projection from the data space to the latent space and we had a decoder okay, or the decoding phase where the data was projected from the latent space back to the data space. So this was broadly what uh, is done in a VAE by minimizing the evidence lower bound. Now in hierarchical VAE what happens is, so here 
thing is there is only one latent space so this is the this we'll call the data space this is the latent space or the latent variable and this again is the data space okay so now the encoding uh, takes the data and projects it onto the latent space and the decoding takes the latent space and projects it back to the data space that is what the idea is right but here there is only one latent space so in a in a hierarchical vae in a hierarchical vae there are multiple latent spaces unlike in a vae where there is only one latent space in a let uh, in a hierarchical vae there are multiple uh, latent spaces in a hierarchical manner which means that data is first projected onto the first latent space and from there data moves to the second latent space and then to the third latent space and so on and we have uh, up to capital t number of uh, latent spaces so this is the the encoding procedure and decoding just reverses what it is so starting from the tth latent space uh, it takes the tth latent space to t minus first latent space and from there t minus second latent space and so on up to the data space okay so this is the decoding process now what is the intuition here is that instead of designating all the job to one encoder right i mean what is what is that we are doing in in in, in an encoder of a, a vae or any latent variable model for that matter is to take data and forcing the encoder or the encoding distribution so if you recall what is the encoding distribution it is the latent posterior which we have been denoting by q of uh, z on x and this is p of x given z right the decoding distribution so now we are forcing one single distribution with one single latent space to encode or embed all the information about uh, the data distribution and compress it okay in one step now this may not be a great idea because uh, there is so much information with data and uh, compressing all that uh, information into a lower dimensional subspace uh, using one step transition may be difficult so now intuitively it makes better sense to instead have multiple projections onto multiple latent spaces where the transition from the data space to the latent space and vice versa happens in a hierarchical manner quote and quote slowly okay so this is i mean the the idea is that if you do this then uh, encoding and reconstructing or rather decoding the data is much simpler if one does it in a hierarchical manner okay that is the intuition now a diffusion model takes it uh, one step forward where they say that a, a diffusion model or a ddpm is a hierarchical vae with the following properties suppose we impose uh, these properties in a hierarchical vae this is how we are going to get so we have uh, the first property is that of course there are uh, multiple latent spaces we have multiple latent spaces the second property is that typically in a vae the dimensionality of the latent space is much compare uh, much less compared to uh, the dimensionality of the data space but in a in a ddpm or a diffusion model the dimensionality of the latent space of all latent spaces is same as that of the data space 
This is another special property of a DDPM, which means that I'm saying the dimensionality of the latent space is equal to, or rather, let's let it the other way around, the dimensionality of the latent space, all latent spaces are equal to the dimensionality of the data space, okay, for all t. Uh, first, there are multiple latent spaces, let's call them z1, z2, up to we have zt, right? and the dimensionality of the latent space is equal to that of the uh, data space. And now why that is uh, that's a good thing to do? It's because again in a VAE uh, when we are compressing, when you're projecting data onto a lower dimensional space, there may be loss of information and you know, we rather don't want to do it. So we match the dimensionality uh, of the latent spaces to the data space. So that, is, uh, that can be a vague or rough intuition so as to why this may be important. The third thing that is done here is the encoding process the encoding procedure let me call it for now encoding procedure is fixed or like non learnable unlike in a vae or a hierarchical vae where the encoders are learned. So, unlike a VAE or a hierarchical VAE. Now, if you recall in a VAE, the encoding uh, was represented using a probabilistic neural network, right? So, this is so phi is a neural network that is learned, right? That is via elbow optimization. This is what we do in a VAE. In a DDPM, though, the encoding distribution Q of Z given X, okay, for all Z is, is fixed and not learnable. See, note that I am not saying that the encoding distribution or encoding procedure is deterministic. Okay, It is still a probabilistic uh, process. It is a probabilistic process, but not learnable. So, this it is a fixed probabilistic process. And that is why you see that uh, when you represent the forward, I mean the, the encoding process of a DDPM, uh, the distributions uh, do not have any dependence on parameters because there is nothing to learn here. Okay. Now, in a DDPM, what is learned is only the decoding process is learned, right? Encoding process is not learnable, but the, so here, I will write it separately. So, in a VAE, both encoding and decoding process, I mean, procedures are learned. Both encoding and decoding are learned. So, in a DDPM, only decoding is learned. Only decoding is learned. The encoding procedure is not learned, uh, but only uh, made a fix, fixed probabilistic process as we will see now. So, now again what is the intuition here? The lot of uh, the background comes from the stochastic differential equation theory, okay, uh, where the idea is you know imagine that I mean, what are we what, what are we trying to build here? We are trying to build a generative model, right? A generative model is one that would take an arbitrary distribution which is the latent space and projects it back onto the data space, okay, which means that no matter what sort of encoding process is there, if we can somehow reverse that en encoding process, then we are then we already have a generative model with it. So we don't have to necessarily learn the encoding process because all we need is, I mean, in, in a generative modeling setup, all we need is to start from the latent space and get to the data space. Now then, why do we need a latent variable model? A latent variable model is needed because if we know how to start from the data space and get to the latent space, 
perhaps we can learn how to start from the latent space and go back to the data space and that is precisely what we do in a latent variable model by marginalizing so we have seen that so far now while encoding is necessary there's no there's no uh, intuitively there's no strict necessity that the encoding process has to be learnable okay so that's why uh, and also partially it comes from the stochastic differential equation uh, community that you have suppose you have one encoding process that is uh, that is fixed uh, and not learnable you can always come up with a decoding process uh, which can be learnable and it it, it matches the uh, the the encoding process and we will see all that in a while so that is the intuition now uh, these are the three properties that we have to now impose on a vae to get to a diffusion model now think of a diffusion model as a vae with these three properties what are the three properties one uh, it has multiple latent spaces unlike in a in a vae ddpm has multiple latent spaces that is made hierarchical which means that starting from the data space you go to the first latent space and from first latent space you go to the second latent space and so on and you have capital t of them to the dimensionality of the latent spaces all of them uh, is the same as that of uh, as that of the data space that is the second property the third property is that the encoding procedure is fixed uh, or it's not a learnable unlike in a vae only the decoding process is learned okay now uh, with uh, with all this so let us uh, uh, get into the details of how to how to build a diffusion model and how to learn it okay let's write down ddpms 